Somebody say, neighbor, I'm ready for the word of God. Don't talk to me. Don't distract me. Because God got something to say. And if you receive it, you're going to be blessed. Now put your hands together as we receive this great man of God. None other than Bishop Thomas L. Johnson. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. Glory, glory. Glory. Oh, yes. That's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead, saints of God. Go ahead. He's a wonder in my, my soul. He's a wonder. In my, my soul, he is a wonder. In my soul, bless his holy name. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. In my soul, my God is a wonder. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, said he's a wonder. In my soul, he's a wonder. In my soul. Bless, 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 be his holy name. He's all, he's all that I, I need. He's all, my God is all I need. He's all that I need. Bless his holy name. God still work miracles. Oh, God still, oh, God, he still work miracles. God still work miracles. 
and he's a wonder. In my soul, God still, I don't care what the problem is, work miracle. My God still, work miracle. And he's a wonder, he's a wonder. In my soul, blessed be his name. He's all that I, I need. My God is all. He's all that I need. My God is all that I need. Bless his holy name. When the doctors couldn't explain, he still worked a miracle. Love you, my dear wife. My baby, my wife. I forgot how many chemo she was assigned to, but one particular day I was, she was going and she was so low. And she said, I hate going to this place or this and the last words that the Lord said, tell her, go get your praise report. Go get your praise report. And when the doctor called me in the room, called my daughters in the room, said we can't find no cancer. <laughs> she don't have to take no more chemo. God is telling somebody this morning, Go get your praise report. He still work miracles. My God still. And as she said, then doctors and different ones still they want to loose. And then, as she said, she said, well, we got to take some more tests because something didn't look right. I said, honey, they ain't going to find nothing. I said, but they're going to be confused. And I asked her doctor, when the doctor called me, I said, do you believe in miracles? Yes. So you can't be ashamed of your testimony. She didn't know how to answer me at first. I said, do you believe in miracles? Because if you don't believe in miracles, you're the wrong. I didn't tell her that, but I was being more professional. She said, yes, I pray for all my patients. You wanted her to take this test. They went into her back and got fluid. They went in her lymph nodes and took fluid. And you didn't find nothing. And now you're trying to find something else. Ain't nobody God but God, and I know we got to learn how to speak the word. Not only that, you, 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 my blessed children, my brothers and sisters who I love so much, we went on a 40-day fast. It wasn't just for my wife. We went on that 40-day fast. To intercede for everyone, especially the household of faith. And before, when she had went to get that second, we had just came off, I think a day, off that fast. And God spoke to this congregation and said, you're going to hear one miracle after another miracle? You will hear one miracle after another miracle? You will hear one miracle? After another miracle, 
And if you don't believe God in miracle, can't nothing. Lord, come on, sing to help me. Do it. Do it for me. I know you can, Lord. Lord, do it for me. We're praying for somebody out there today. your Bible. You read the story. You know the story. About Daniel in the lion's den. He said, I'll call him my God. And I know he won't fail me. And he won't Brought him out with the victory. I know you can Lord, do it. Lord, do it. I know there's nothing impossible for you, Jesus. Lord, do it for me. My name has a miracle written on. Jesus, do it for me, Jesus. Do it for me right now. Call into the prison, Lord, where they feel they have no hope, Jesus. Do it for me. Do it for me, Lord. Right now. Do it for me. 
of the homeless, Jesus, do it for me. Father God, use a miracle worker. Use a savior of souls. Use a provider. Use an author of eternal life. Thank you for being rich in mercy. Thank you for renewing your grace every day. We live in this day because of you. We humble ourselves before you. We confess our sins before you. We ask you to forgive our trespasses. Forgive our sin. Trespass against others. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us out of debt that we owe no man that we be the lenders and not the borrowers, and that we release those that's in debt to us. Much is given, much is required. You got power over death, hell, and everything that the enemy will bring against it. You greater than all things. Help us in this feeble body, feeble mind, Pity us, oh God, we just made out of dust. It is your soul and spirit that make us alive. We rebuke the adversary and the lying spirits and everything to try to come against you and the peoples of God and your work. The enemy is defeated, but he's, he's on an assignment. You can stop him when you want to, but this is purpose behind the devil assignment. According to the 45th chapter of the book of Isaiah, you God over good and evil. Everything is subject to you. Shama. And you had not given us the spirit of fear, but love, sound mind. And we thank you for the sound mind. We thank you for the power to fight against the spirits that will come against the church, against the peoples of God. Sanctify us, O oh God, again. Sanctify this place because the people sanctify themselves. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for her testimony. You get the glory. You get the praise. Thank you for the strength that you give all. I thank you, Lord, for the team that you have formed around me, the core. I bless every one of them in your name, O oh God. I thank you for the kindness that they have shown my wife and I. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my sister, Lois, Renee, and Diane. Thank you, Lord, for my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. I thank you for those that came in spite of their hurts today. Some are sitting in pain, give me a word for them. Some is in distress, give me a word for them. A word of hope. And then, Lord, some need deliverance. Send your word and heal and deliver people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 18th chapter. So the book of Psalms, I know it's God because he confirmed it all through the service thus far. I'd like to thank you all, those of you that assist me and those that supported us in the services of our dear sister, Sister Kim, installing to pastorship. Thank you. Power of the Lord was so strong in this place yesterday. I couldn't just, last Sunday, I couldn't even walk out the door. I, I stopped my sister yesterday and said to her, girl, 
I said, I didn't turn on YouTube and Facebook a couple of times to hear that prayer that you prayed last week. <laughs> My wife, who was that? Uh, was, somebody was talking, and, and they say, you get Diane and Lewis out of praying on something. And Sister Johnson, and, and there's a couple of them around here. I'm not going to mention started going on, but there's a couple of them pray. You you can close the book if they started praying. I'm telling you, Shoot, they 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 serious. Mm-hmm. You know who they are. Get a, get a tissue or something, girl. You all oh, excuse me, y'all know how real I am. I I just let people talk to me so I bring my ear. Bring my tears. I love God. You know, I learned something. Be who you are, and people going to love you for who you are or whatever. Be for real. There's no time for show. 24th verse, 118 Psalms. Mm-hmm. I, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick it up. Yeah, 118. Y'all, y'all in my message today. Did I say 118? If I said it, you know, y'all, blame it on my age. 118 division of Psalms. One, one, eight Psalms. I'm going to start at the, I'm going to start it at the 19th verse. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord unto which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, note that righteous, for thou have heard me, and I'll become my salvation. The stone which the builder refused is become the head stone of the corner. That's a prophecy there. I ain't gonna tell you what it is, you have to study your Bible. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous. Somebody say marvelous. In our eyes. This is the day. Somebody need to say this is the day with conviction. Because God can do a miracle any minute, any second, which the Lord have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that come in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Somebody think coming to the house of God is in vain. We will bless you. Blessings come out of this house. We was talking about that in Bible study. Y'all bless you. Okay, Romans. Take it to the New Testament. 14th chapter, 6th verse. Going to help somebody of God help them. Romans 1, 4, chapter. 6th verse. I'm going to read down to the ninth. He that re regards the day, regard it unto the Lord. He that regard not the day to the Lord, he does not regard it. He that eat, eat to the Lord. And he that give God thanks, for he that eat not to the Lord, he eat not and give God, and giving God thanks. In other words, you just put that plate in front of you and start eating. Don't say, Lord, thank you for the food. 
looking around, seeing who's watching you. So you're ashamed for somebody to know that you blessing God for the food. You don't know what's in the food. But prayer can erase it. Mm, 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 mm. For none of us live to ourselves, and no man die to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. And whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord. Congregation say, we are the Lord. For this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. Going back to our key verse, there was a supporting verse, I mean chapter. This is the day. That the Lord have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because I'm in it. Topic is our, our assignment is today is to praise the Lord. Repeat after me. My assignment today is to praise the Lord. Now raise your hand and say, my assignment today is to praise the Lord. He made this day for me and you to praise him in it, in it. Put your hand together and give him glory. Give him praise. Give him praise because you're in it may not feel good in your body, but you're in it. You might have some tests and trials, but you're in it. Woo! Now listen to this. It's by the grace of God that we're in it. You may be seated if you can. You know, we get our temperature taken every time we come in. And so when I came in, my temperature was really low. 88. And you know what the normal is. 96, 97. Mine was 88. And then they took it again, 88. Went into the office. And I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat me a little something. I'm going to ask the nurse to bring me some tea. And I'm sitting there, I'm still doing my lesson. And I said to my nurse, go out there and get the temperature and take it again. Before that, though, I got to say this, the woman of God told her what was going on. She laid hands on me, and she began to pray and rebuke demons and spirits. I felt the anointing going through my body. And she prayed. She went, it wasn't no little pity pat pray. She was praying. She was praying. Take your hands off. She didn't say it so much as her husband, the man of God. Every spirit, everyone, we rebuke you. Spirit of death, every other spirit. About five minutes later, Angie came in there with Brother Edwin, took the temperature, 97.6. Don't take God long. Y'all better leave me alone. It don't take God long to do nothing. It's uh, your faith. Is slowing you down from your miracle. It don't take God long to do nothing. Your faith is slowing down your miracle. 
You selling for what the enemy speak to your color of mind. But it's not what the enemy or your color of mind tell you. It's what you know God and already said even before it happened. You shall live and not die. This is a good time to put in an old song. Who report? Will you believe? The enemy. Uh-huh. My son here, he's so concerned. He said, you all right, Bishop? Someone else said, maybe you, only, maybe you shouldn't preach. Okay. And I said, well, this is. And I done told y'all before, if I go out like this, it would be a glorious way to go. But then I know I'm fighting spirits. I shared with you all. And I don't want to talk about me, but I shared with you all. I said, you don't know what people are going through. You don't come here on Sunday morning to hear about how sick my wife is or how much I'm carrying. You don't come here for that. For many days, I didn't came here, burdened down to the ground, but you would never know it because I'm trying to help you to have hope. And if she hadn't gave the testimony, I wouldn't have gave it because it was her testimony. I could have got up here and said how I was, and I have, I said this, but I didn't go in detail. I said I was taking care of my mother, my wife, trying to man make sure that the bills is paid here. Huh? Some of y'all knew what kind of strain I was under, but I love my pastors. They my pastors too. They have been steadfast. Now, I know some people, like I told them yesterday, some people's always talking about why them? Why not them? When I went out, the pastor, they said, what that boy going to do? He got that raggedy building. It don't have no heat in there. It don't have no water. They bring water from the house to flush the toilet. And sometimes we'll go in there and do like this. And we see the, then we, then I'll call back and say, honey, put the, put Put the uh, chairs up, up in the living room. It's too cold to have church in. And then, what did we get? How did you get one? They had one commercial stove in the kitchen, and we all gathered around that stove. But we believe what God said. God says, "If you go, I'll go with you." And whatever God is telling you to do, just like Jesus. Mother told him in the first miracle, turning water into wine. He said, wherever I feel the Holy Ghost, whatever he say do, do it. Don't worry about what people say. Don't stop to address the ideology. Why should you come down from the wall and go to a meeting with naysayers? Nehemiah said, I ain't coming down. Two times they tried to get him to come down. Sam Bally, Gershon, Tobias. Said, we want to have a meeting with you. And oh, no. He said, oh, no. And did I like his response? Why? Give me an explanation. Why should I come down to you? And the work of the Lord cease. God has deposited into every one of you. And why should you come down and the vision, the dream, and all the people that God have assigned to you to be a blessing to cease to have a meeting with folks that don't believe in your vision, in your gift, in your vision. Give God glory and praise. The problem with us, we're going around trying to hear something favorable about us.
may not have read the scripture. Beware of the person that everybody speak well of. You know why you seek confirmation from people? You know why you're looking for affirmation from people's affirmation from people's? Because you don't believe in yourself. And if you own the tightrope of low self-esteem and self-image and self-worth, one negative report will push you over the edge. Don't talk your vision with everybody. Don't talk your dreams with everybody. You sometimes you can't even talk to your prayer partner. Persuade yourself that you can talk. But if you're not persuaded, you don't need to talk to no one unless you know. Our daughter called me because she wanted prayer. She knew she had to make the decision. Don't make decisions for folks because you hinder their faith. I'm helping somebody in here. It's just like doing, what's it say? It's just like doing too much for your children. You hinder them from growing up and they have a problem growing up if you do too much for them. God got balance in the way he help us. Some things I shared with you, he give you and I the faith so we can handle it. And if it's too big for us, he say, sit down. Let God arise and the enemy be scattered. And then I'll put you back on him. Every now and then, you watch these pictures when they're tunneling through mountains. Men do so much with the sludge hammer, the pit pump. But then they say, wait a minute, we need some dynamite, dunamis. And so they called in the individual with the dynamite or explosion, whatever they could use today. And once they put it in there, charge it, boom, then they say, you can go back to work. Sometimes there's hindrance when trying to prevent you from doing the will of God. Stop trying to get through there. If you can't get through there, if you can't pray through there, it ain't a job for you. It's a God is a job for our mighty God. I'm going to help you out. So God help me out. Except the Lord build a house. You're laboring in vain. You can pray all day and all night, but there's some things you got to turn over to God. Hmm? Except the Lord build the city, you're laboring in vain. You know what happened when you and I try to do too much? We can't sleep at night. Our blood pressure jump up. Our sugar go up. Hmm? We get flaky, mad. Disposition change. Lose your peace. Lose your joy. Because you're trying to do it. I've been there. He's not only your savior, he's your deliverer. And he redeemed you and I to praise him. I know we read it and it sounds real good. First Peter 2 and 9. For we are all priesthood. We are a holy nation. To show forth the praises of the Lord. He brought us out 
Now I want you to reflect right now. What did he bring us out of? And what, wherever we was in, could we give him a pure praise? <laughs> we were shame, and we know God wouldn't accept no foul praise. Our hands was dirty. Our souls and mind and body was dirty. But he brought us out of darkness into a marvelous light. Look up the word marvelous. You do this for me, Lord? Yes. You save me, Lord? Yes. For what? I'm going to give you eternal life. Nobody want to die. And if you die, you want to know, if you get put out of a house, you, you want to know you got one to go to. But you got a work to do while you're here. What is that, Lord? Show forth my praise. You are a peculiar peoples. Hmm? Yes. You're different. The thing about being different. In an unclean, adulterous generation that judge you from the outward appearance, but not your heart. And so therefore, God began to judge our thoughts. For the Bible says he knows our thoughts from afar off. He knows what we're going to think before we think it. Can you imagine a God loving us in spite of Knowing what our potential is to be. And you want to know, so where is my potential to be without God? What was you before God saved you? Those are, that was your potential. What did you do ungodly before you became godly? That was your potential. So he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. My heart, my spirit, and my mind. So you can live in a dirty, corrupt world. Turn to the first chapter of Romans. Our assignment is today is to praise God. Not only today, but every day. Romans, first chapter. Some of you are taking notes and some of you are going to forget it because the thief is going to take it from you. And your body is going to take over. Your kind of mind is going to take over. And you are not going to let this, you are not going to, Turn on, chew on this like a cow. So once you leave here, you won't forget it. Because if it's not buried in your heart, you're going to sin. Well, how you know I'm going to sin? Because the flesh is weak. And it give in to pleasure. It give in to lust. I know you're sin. I will too. I didn't have the word. In my heart. What did the 119 division of Psalms say? No, I ain't going to ask you because you don't know, some of you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The only thing going to keep me from sinning is the word of God, the love of God, and the power of God. And other than that, I don't care what you are, what you got, and what your title is, you going to sin. The world is not building a program around God. It's, they building an a, a, a institution around flush and lust. Can't find a movie, Holly, because all of them is R-rated. And it don't mean revival. <laughs> you go all through there. 
warning, this may, how to go? This is for mature audience. Then on the side, nudity, nudity, profanity, violence. Huh? It already abides you. But our spirit have become so carnal that we insistitize and you think I can look at anything, I can go anywhere, and I can do everything, and still stay sanctified. You's a lie. I can't do it. That is, you, you's a lie. You, you're lying to yourself. Well, I don't feel that way. When was the last time you fast? Without the church telling you, they be going on a fast. When the last time you stayed before God for a while without the church saying, okay, everybody finna pray. When the last time you asked God to search you without somebody saying, come on, y'all, we gonna, let's see. And sin is so prevalent today right at your door. God said to uh, Lucille Sidney, he, he, he said to the man of God, now, I mean, Cain, not the man that got the man of the devil. He said, if you don't do well, sin is at your door. And for some of us, sin is not at, just at the door. We didn't let him in the living room. We didn't let him in the bedroom. We didn't let him in. Matter of fact, he's not a visitor at some of our house. He lives there. He, he's just like a cat. You felt sorry for him. Meow. Meow. That cat hungry. Meow. I'm going to let him in and feed him. You let that devil in, you can't get rid of him. And he's going to make sure you don't get rid of him. Because he's he going to bring the lust in there. He's going to bring some things in there. And you ain't got enough power to say, get the hits behind me this world is defiled Jesus said if you be ashamed or translated fearful to confess me before this generation which is sin curse. Sin bring the curse with it. It'll curse your finance, your health, your life. For the wages of sin is death. And more than one way to die. You start dying mentally before you start dying physically. You can tell when you're dying spiritually things that you used to rebuke you pet now and the bible says lay aside every weight we wear it like a ball and chain and then you wonder why you come here and you don't have your own joy That's just like the heat been cut off in your house, you got to go next door to get warm. But one day they ain't going to be home. And you don't have your whole heat. One day they ain't going to be there to pray for you. To intercede for you. And one day you're going to find out I should have brought my own oil. Why, Bishop? This is a time we're living in of blessing and curses. People are being blessed in the midst of everything that's going on, and people are being cursed as never before. God transcends 
whatever going on in the earth. He ruled, he super ruled, he potates over potates, and when God said, I'm going to bless you, he don't care what the pandemic is, he don't care what the peril is, he don't care what's going on, he said, I'll bless you because you're mine. You'll walk through fire, and it won't kindle you. You'll walk through water, and you won't drown. Isaiah 43. Why? Because you're mine. You weren't ashamed to mention my name. You weren't ashamed. Maybe I'm letting this out too quick, but I'm going to let you. I'm going to see it right now. I told my wife, I said, listen, God go get praise. I said, you, I said, when the choir started again, it ain't started with lay members. It started with ministers. <laughs> Why with ministers? Because they already love God and got the right spirit. I'm tired of these folks with the wrong spirit trying to come in here and sing and live like hell through the week. So the next choir members you're going to see is the preacher. I say, then anybody come in, they're going to be built around the ministry. I say, God going to get a perfect praise. Somebody, if, if somebody says, okay, we need to fast, we need to pray, well, we all up here. Let's do it. Going to be another emphasis. Whenever it's quiet time, you're going to be quiet time. Quiet time. Amen. These people, these ministers ain't going to be waiting for the director. They ain't going to be waiting for the musician. Every time they had to wait, it's going to be prayer. And we're going to pray so many times. I'm just being honest. God deserves a praise. We're trying to get a praise when people that are not on the run of coin. That's why you got so much a mess in the, in the choir and everywhere else, even in the church. How can common people understand spiritual faith? Read Romans 8 if you think I'm getting tough on you. They say they can't because it's spiritual discern. They want to maybe, but they can't. I didn't say they didn't love God, but they ain't ready to sacrifice. They ain't ready to sacrifice yet. 12th chapter of Romans. I beseech you, brethren, sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy. That's the only way you're going to be accepted. God is getting us ready, Joyce. God going to have a glorious choir. There's going to be a glorious revival. And if this season don't make you be real, don't make me be real, we deserve to go to hell. I deserve to go to hell. You deserve to go to hell. If you can't see the signs of the end of time, then you deserve to go to hell. I deserve to go to hell. And you out there, you need to go to hell. If we can't see what God is trying to do, trying to save us, Because the next wave of things come in, going to be worse, sir. Now, who are you going to run to? Just told you about the miracle of my, of my wife and others that had miracles. We live in a corrupt world. It's all about money. And the love of money is the root of all evil. They'll let you die for money. They'll let you die for their own power. You better wake up. Ain't nobody gonna help us but God. They done closed down schools, try to open them, and the pandemic struck them, and God said, okay. 
There ain't nothing gonna be over till I say it's over. Ain't nobody gonna go to work till I say. I go to the White House, I go to your house, and anybody else's house. This is the Lord's doing. The sad part, when judgment come, good people die just like bad people. I want to stay in the grace of God. I said it last night, and I said it again. You better become a praise. I'm like, I, my assignment is to praise the Lord. Well, there will be third chapter of Malachi. He'll make a difference. I know I'm living on grace. You ain't got to tell me. 74 years old, still can get around. I don't take it for granted. I got a nice home I can stay at. Got another one I can stay at. But everything gonna pass away. Everything gonna burn down. And I know this, if I don't preach the truth to you and try to get you ready, God don't need me. He called me for a purpose. He saved me for a purpose. He delivered me for a purpose. And it's not to show off. Romans. This is my last scripture. I can go on, but I'm not going to overfeed nobody. That's why I give you scripture so you can study. Those of you that will. Yes, I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start. You think I, I think I'm going to start in the fourth verse, if you'll be so kind to read, sir. Do you have a mic back there? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I got to stop after a while anyway, because I feel like praying. Go ahead. Romans 1 and 4. Yes. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Go ahead, read. By whom we have received grace and apostleship mm -hmm. for obedience to the faith among all nations. You got to be name. obedient to what you believe in. Can't, you just can't say, I'm saved. You just can't say, I serve the Lord and not obedient to it. Jesus said, this people serve me with their mouth. Their mouth. But their mind, translated their thoughts and heart, is far from me. Don't you know God no flesh from spirit? Read. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? He called us. Go ahead. To all that are in Rome, mm -hmm. that are that be in Rome, sorry. Mm -hmm. Beloved of God, called to be saints. We are, we are called to be what? Saints. Who among us? Saints. Adulterers. Saints. Sleep around with the sisters in the church. Saints. Sleep around with the brothers in the church. Saints. Mess makers. Saints. <laughs> Ain't nothing gonna clean the house of God up with the word and prayer and fasting. The devil will sit here all day and all night. <clears throat> I'm talking about the influence when I say that. God trying to get you and I rooted and grounded. Don't get carried away now. The devil will promise you anything to keep you serving him. You don't believe it? Read Matthew. <clears throat> Went up there in, in the beginning of Matthew. Told the devil, I give you, told Jesus, I give you all this, serve me. I give you money. I give you a house. I give you land. I give some of the fame that you've been looking for, but just serve me. You write that down? This is the fourth chapter, I believe, is Matthew. Then go on to say this. 
Help me, Lord, help me. The enemy will give you anything so you can stay with him. He'll give you anything. He'll give you that sister. He'll give you that brother. He'll give you that. Because he knew that the end of it is death. He even know his end. If you don't believe it, read the 22nd chapter of Revelation. He know he's going to be cast in. And so he's going to offer you things. There's not going to leave you nothing but an empty heart and an empty soul. Men are dying young of heart attacks now, more so than women. Women are dying, but men, young men are dying of heart attacks. The Bible said it. It got, it got to come to pass because he said it. I told you they're killing our babies and our children. That's a spirit. Yeah. And you're not covering your children when you don't bring them to church and pray over them. I don't care if they want it or not. Say, so you, you know, be a mother, be a daddy, be a leader. Say, so you don't know what you want. Now get your big head over here so I can pray. I know what you need. Then he said, you ain't going to pray for me. You know, when they smell themselves, you can't tell them nothing. You said, I tell you what, you're lying demon, you're lying devil. Every demon and devil in this house ain't going to stay here. I know that's right. You're going to come subject. I come in your bedroom while you're trying to get to sleep and speak in tongues all over this room. But you ain't going to stay here, you demon. You go through your house here, Cody. You want to speak here? Speak in your house. Let that devil know. Digger. I'm trying to sleep. I can't sleep here. If you're right, you can't sleep here. Because that demon leave it here. <laughs> I'm trying to make it as miserable and as uncomfortable as I can for a demon. I don't want a demon to get comfortable. That's why when I, my children are at home, I walk in their bedroom and lay hands on them. They don't let me have to run a revival. After I leave a revival, you know the, uh, the residue of the revival was on me, right? I told my wife, I said, where the children? She said, they sleep. I said, they go in the bedroom, they lay here. Oh, I'm trying to make it as miserable as I can for them. You can't be shamed. That's my, that was my assignment. They playing whatever is going. I say, prayer time, everybody meet me in the living room. Y'all see me come from the north, east, west, and west. Like that. Your mother say. And then you need somebody. See, when you're married, you got to touch and agree on these things. You don't need nobody saying, well, you too hard on them, or you too this on them. You got to be on one accord. Well, your daddy called prayer. I said, well, I'll tell you one thing. You better straighten that face up before you, you go in that living room. That's the way the old folks taught us. They taught us to keep prayer in our house. No mother, well, son, you got to pray. <laughs> tell the saints now, so y'all need prayer in your home. They operate on how the home is now. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's what it is. You got to put insulation around your house or you're going to pay a high cost in utility bills. And where's the highest cost of your children? I want to talk about the children, to the children. My heart, my wife, my heart, three-year-old kids getting killed, seven-year-old kids killing a baby, seven years old, with sex. No mercy. You can't protect them. 
How are you going to protect the children? Amen. You can't protect yourself without the grace of God, without God helping us. Do y'all understand what I'm trying to say to you? The only thing you can do is pray for them day and night. Lord, I don't know where my children at. I don't know what they're doing. But please, Lord, save my children. Help my children. Bless my children. That's all you can do. Lord, lay me on my heart to pray for my two sons last night. I didn't pray for everybody because I had a target. And my target was my two boys. I said, Lord, lay me on my heart to pray for Thomas and Tim. Let that devil know. If you put your hands on something of mine, you're going to have to deal with God. We got to stop being shy and timid. Read, read on. I got to let the people go. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Continue. Jump down to the 21st verse for the sake of time. Please read this this week at home. Not that you're convenient, but I, I encourage you to do so. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Romans 1 and 20, 21. 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. It's a bad thing to know the will of God and then still use your own imagination to do wrong. Read on. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Let me tell you. Let me tell myself. Ain't nobody... Nobody don't have to catch you doing wrong. God had already caught you. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Nobody had to catch you doing wrong. God had already caught you doing wrong. Read on. <laughs> and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Mm-hmm. And to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Mm -hmm. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, uncleanness, Un lust. God would give you. Told you what we'll be without God. When we're not on our assignment, when we're not living up to our purpose, God give us over. You blaming it on the devil? You blame it on the demons. Mm. Blame it on God. He said he give you up to unclean spirits. Mm -hmm. And you wonder how come you can't stay from uh, those dirty movies. <clears throat> those sex toys. You wonder how come you can't look at your sisters without wanting to go to bed with them. And your brothers, you wonder. Because you've been, huh? Because... You've been given over to unclean spirits. Well, I'm talking, well, listen, I'm talking to those who will not, God trying to get you saved, and you keep on saying, uh-uh. He said, okay, this country have given over to unclean spirits. And we're in this world, but we're not of this world. You got to save yourself now. Don't be talking to nobody all day about what they're supposed to do and shouldn't do, and they say, they're supposed to be saved, pray for them. And you ain't getting in that kind of conversation back and forth with them. You know God loves you. You know you ought to be saved by now. God said, shut up. It's my time now. That's what happened to Israel. When God tell the priest to stop talking, then God gonna start to act. Read on. Through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies. They between dishonor themselves. their own body. Go ahead. Between themselves. Let me say this. 
Some folks will try to say, well, how come I used to didn't think like this, and, and I used to didn't have no problem, and, uh, I could rebuke. See, the thing about it, when you have sex with somebody, they enter your body and you enter their body. Every sin that's committed is outside the body. But when you have sex, it's inside your body. And if it's inside your body, it gets inside your spirit. Mm. So you're not just having sex with your body. That person, that spirit is entering into your body. And your body is supposed to be the temple of the living God. And now you're letting the uncleanness get into your temple. And now, when these type of messages are taught and preached, you feel uncomfortable and hope I shut up, but I ain't. Ah! Oh my God. Because judgment must first start in the house of God. And if it starts in the house of God, where should the ungodly and the sinner man appear? God gonna have a glorious church. And he said, how the church gonna get clean? By the word. That's how I come. Many ministry won't preach sound doctrine. And people is not condemned when they sin. And if you start doing it, sin it, then they I didn't come to hear all of that. What assignment you on today? Read, sir. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Mm -hmm. You ain't got to do all of that. Anyway, that, that's old stuff he preaching. It don't take all of that to be saved. God love everybody. He, he, he is there trying to send somebody. I ain't sending nobody to hell. You sending yourself. I don't have nothing to do with what you do. That's just like saying the mailman fault because he sent you a shut off notice. It's his fault. He shouldn't have brought me the mail. Why don't you think like this? He brought you the mail so you can pay your bill. It ain't his fault. You want to live in denial? And then, where's the mail? They should have sent me a mail because if I knew I owed the bill, I would have paid it. It's the mailman's fault. No. You see, it's a double-edged sword. Preach, it, preach this way. Yeah, preach. I'm just going to bring the mail. You pay it, you don't. But it ain't my fault. I ain't going to let you put that on me. You don't. Know? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. They go and worship the creature. I want y'all to take a good look at me. I ain't gonna point y'all out. You say I'm preaching on you. I am preaching to you. I ain't preaching on you. I am a creature made by God. I am a creature. My creator have given me a spirit, a soul, and a body. You cannot see my spirit. You hear what come out of my body. I use, since it's Halloween, let me give you something to holler about. Some of you are already living in a haunted house. You ain't got to go to a haunted house. I am a creature. And when you worship the creature, male or female or anything, and put it above God's commandments, he going to turn some things loose. I don't care what it's preacher, whoever it is, you fill in the blanks. I can't fill in your blanks. But I want you to know I'm a creature. It would make me what I am, that I have a spirit. I can breathe. When I die, this creature body is going back to the dust. But this spirit and soul that you hear talking to you, got a God to answer to. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how cute you are. You stay in that grave long enough, you could be ugly. I'm trying to help somebody in here, because we need to preach the truth. 
You ain't trying to make nobody feel good. I try to give a balanced message. A good parent gives their children a balanced meal. Read, sir. Who is blessed forever. God is blessed forever. Will I praise him or not? Will you praise him or not? God going to be blessed forever. Mm -hmm. Read on. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. Vile affection. All of a sudden. I want to have sex with a man. <laughs> Not a woman. I want to stay having sex with me. I'm going to call the sex line. Uh, come on, y'all. Turn it over to foul spirit. Instead of when that spirit is so vibrant in the day and that spirit try to come. So use a lie, you, you lying devil. Uh, you homosexual devil. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, that, that wasn't political. I ain't trying to be political. I'm trying to be salvational. I'm trying to, huh? You can march against the preacher, but you can't march against God. And you're going to be God preaching in this time and day, you better be bold. <laughs> Don't look at the full seats. If God fills the seat, that's his desire. But it's what the seats are filled with. <laughs> Read, sir. And even their women did change the natural use into that which is against them. I nature. don't want my husband. I want your wife, women saying this to one another. Man can't do nothing for me no more. And if you don't rebuke those spirits, they are linger. See, you, see, when thoughts come to you that are not of God, you got to rebuke them. You, you cannot let them linger in your mind. You cannot reason with bad spirits. Say it with me. I cannot reason with bad spirits. I have to rebuke them and cast them out. Let that spirit just stay on you. Now you're burning. Now I'm going to go here. Some of you brothers, some of you sisters, keep on praying for a husband. Some of you men, you're lying to me. You need a wife. Why would you sit up in the church and burn? I ain't talking about, you don't want to talk about burning. If you're going to burn and want to have sex like that, you ought to do it legally. If I'm burning, I can go home to my wife. You go home to everybody else. Don't think I don't know what's going on. God, if when I don't know what's going on, God giving it to me. Get rid of that fornication spirit. It's an unclean spirit, and I'm going to talk about it. Come on, Bishop. Because I don't talk about it, he's going to jump on our children at an early age. And I don't care what the Supreme Court say. I don't care what the court say. Come on. It's wrong. You won't believe God, the Bible, or the legislator that tell you that God is wrong. Because it please your flesh. Everybody's right in their own eyes. Nobody want to be wrong. I don't want to be wrong. But God put all of us in check. All right. You know you shouldn't be thinking like that, Thomas. That's the wrong spirit trying to get on you. Loose to you, devil. 
you don't rebuke it, I tell you, let the door here move in. Please. 27th verse. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly. And that's the kind of world we're living in. And you know what? They not shame. Christians are shame and they not shame. You ought to see when they have their little they little march. They little parade. They ain't shame. Our evangelistic team here say, okay, saints, we're gonna walk around the perimeters of two miles perimeter around and we're gonna holler in the name of Jesus. We're gonna say that God love you and we let us pray for you. I ain't going out there. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And then I already been in church and bitches kept us longer than we wanted to be. Now you talk about marching. Are you gonna feed us? Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word proceed out the mouth of God. Go ahead, we closing in this. Oh Lord, wait a minute, my boy. All right. And receiving in themselves the recompense of the error which was meet. And you receive the recompense of your error. There are some diseases that was dormant that is coming back. Mm -hmm. When you have sex with your wife, you know who you, you're having sex with. You having sex with that person, this person, you don't know what's going on. This world is sin, curse, and adultery. Jesus said that. I didn't say it. You ask God to deliver you. I know it can be difficult. I know it can be difficult. That's why you ask God, Lord, fill me with your spirit. I'm going to tell you something going to help you. Stop being on the defense so much and being on the offense. Remember last week I was telling your son that I see ministry in you? When you start letting God use you, then you'll be more careful about you because you realize I'm God's vessel, I'm God's mouthpiece, I'm a witness for God. But you sit there, don't do nothing. You can pick up the phone and call people and say, I, I want to pray for, I'm going to pray for somebody every day. That'll help you. But when you don't do nothing but just be idle, you never know, what did old folks say? Idle mind is the devil workshop. Now you got all these different spirits talking with you. Trying to help you. I have to have a defense. You don't think the devil tried to tempt me all these years? And so I built me a wall of defense. First of all, it's God Almighty. Deliver me from temptation and deliver me from evil. The next one is my wife. How can I hurt her? She's been so good to me. Secondly, my children. They think of the world of me. I can't shame them. Thirdly, my congregation. All these people that had trust in me all these years. I'm not going to do that to them. I can tell you that. By that time, the lust spirit say, he make me sick. Real, I can tell, I can talk about myself. But don't think I've been tempted. And don't think the enemy didn't come in and say, You can have me. God, my wife, my children, and you all. Because when someone sinned in my position, it hurt a lot of people. I thank you all that hold me up for prayer. I thank all of you that say we're praying for pastor. Amen. I'm not above you. I'm trying to help you. I'm tired of these people acting like they can't be tempted. All you got to do ain't all you got to do. You got to build a defense around you. 
because he's coming in. And more so as these days begin to end. We almost through. What else you got there? Um, beginning at the 28th verse. Mm -hmm. And even as they did not like to retain God in they their knowledge. They had God, but they didn't want to retain God. They had God, but didn't want to retain him. You know why? It was an inconvenience. I can't do what I want to do, be what I really want to be if I retain this. So they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. Can you imagine you having sex with somebody and scripture start coming in your head? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not go. The God said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I don't think that you're going to start speaking in tongues on top of somebody. So therefore, it's more convenient to not to retain God because if you had to pray before and say, Lord, deliver me from temptation. I know he's fine. I know you're fine. Lord, don't let me go into this. Lord, don't let me do this. And then you say, I'm sorry. I can't do this. But you're going And that's how I come all these years. I never tried to compete with the sheets. Ain't no message that I can preach that can compete with the sheets. And I don't need to try. I just tell the truth. Go ahead. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And God turned them over to what? A reprobate mind. Look up the word reprobate. When God turned you over, you reject, the thing God. You reject God, you think I'm, and everybody tell you truth is wrong, and you're right. Don't let them turn you over now. Have you ever been in a relationship when you say, I'm through? You mean, you mean it. See, sometimes you say, I'm through. Y'all go back and forth together. But when you say you're really through, you don't want God to say, I'm going to let you live. Go ahead and do anything you want to do. But you and I, we're through. That's what it's saying. I didn't make that up. He said, I turn you over. This is what you want to be. This is what you want to do. I turn you over to do it. That's the word. Mm -hmm. Read. To do those things which are not convenient. You want to do it? I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to let you. That's what you want to do? That's what you want to be? After knowing the truth? Go ahead. But I'm not going to receive your offering. I'm not going to receive your praise. I'm not going to, I'm not going to receive your sacrifices. First chapter of Isaiah. Write it down. See, I'm giving you nothing but pure word. I'm not mixing nothing in there. I'm not saying, uh, uh. I'm just giving you pure word. That's what we need today. Pure word. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Being filled with what? Not the Holy Ghost no more. Unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. That means you're prone to do anything that the world do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Fornication. Fornication. Wickedness. Wickedness. Covetedness. Covetedness. Maliciousness. Maliciousness. Full of envy. Full of envy. Murder. Murder. Debate. Debate. Deceit. Deceit. Malig malignity. Malignity. I think I said it right. And worship whisperers. Mm -hmm. Whisperer? <laughs> Backbiters? <laughs> I think he was in there. Whispering? Bite biters? Haters of God? Haters of God. Hater of those that mention God. They think they're better than anybody else. Despiteful? Despiteful, proud, proud, boasters, boasters, inventors of evil things, 
Invention of evil fiend. Disobedient to parents. Uh oh, disobedient to their parents, natural parents and spiritual parents. Go ahead. Without understanding. Without understanding. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers can't trust them. They say, I do this and don't do it. Say, I'm with you, marriage, I love you, do death, sickness, and whatever. They don't keep their promise. People don't keep their promise today. They'll tell you what you want to hear, not what you need to hear, for their own motive. Read on. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Implaceable. That's how come that man can go in there, kill that baby, and kill that woman. Without natural affection, don't feel no remorse. And the programs and, and the music is to desensitize you for feeling for others. Now you're bored of being kind. Kind is talk about as being weak. That's how come we have to preach like we preach and teach like we teach. We know what we're against. This is a war. This is a battle. Go ahead. Unmerciful. Unmerciful. Don't have no mercy. Please, please, please. Can eat a sandwich and cut your head off. Unmerciful. You see it, I don't have to tell you. Turn on the news. Every day. We got to teach our children to be kind. We got to teach our children to have a heart. To help those who are less fortunate than we are. Not to be selfish. Go ahead. Who knowing the judgment of God. What is it? And they know the judgment of God. They've been in, they, they didn't heard enough truth. They know the judgment of God. And what happened? That they which commit such things are worthy Those of death. Those that commit such things are worthy of death. Are worthy of death. We don't. Not only do the same. Not only those that is doing it. But have pleasure in them that do them. But those who have pleasure in those that do it. Amen. That's strong. Think about that. Don't tell me God ain't trying to clean us up. Trying to clean me up, you up, and all of us up. You know why? Because you're on a mission. God want to use every one of you. Who thought he would want to use me at age 24? The life I live. But here I am ministering to you all. And he want to bless you all. Y'all got gifts. But the enemy them blinding you, he done trick you. And I'm trying to deliver you some mail today for you to open it up and say, my assignment is to praise God. We don't. Okay. In your hand. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for the word. Amen. What was your assignment today? What was your assignment today? What is your assignment today? What is your assignment today? What is your assignment?